are, are there any common study or preparation errors that you've seen among students that would be useful for our attendees to know about? I think John uh, mentioned one. Um, again, the mm -hmm. IPP offers you some free resources. Um, yeah. When I started my study, I didn't take a course, so I bought the textbook. But what was most useful for to me was that exam blueprint and that body of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so in doing so, what I did was really structured my studies. I didn't do any outside studying of other materials because IPP gives you everything you need to pass the search with those materials. And then really, I'm just going to be frankly honest, it became rote memorization. You know, memorizing what was in that textbook and then comparing that, what was outlined in the body of knowledge and the um, exam blueprint. And over time, you know, I was able to pass all seven of the uh, IPP certifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would yeah, agree. Any, anything? I think the, uh, the, the IPP... Um, do issue what they call the Common Body of Knowledge or, or CBOC. You can find it on the IPP website. And actually what that does is it breaks down the syllabus. It, it's a syllabus document essentially. So it kind of says, here's what's covered in Module 1, here's what's covered in Module 2, here's what's covered in Module 3. And I always encourage my delegates to go down there with literally a tick list and just say, do I know this, do I not know this? Uh, tick, 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 cross, 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 cross. And that's a great way to focus their revision. Um, equally, the more you can do to immerse yourself in the privacy world, uh, the better you'll do. Um, the privacy world does change, and it changes quickly. Um, I always say when I'm, when I'm delivering training for four or five days for a, for a qualification, you know, the world doesn't stop turning, and uh, therefore to know the right people to follow, um, because there's an awful lot of misinformation and myths out there as well. So, um, you know, so choose your trainer carefully, choose your uh, course carefully, um, use the material the IPP put, put, put out there, um, including mock exam questions as well, uh, to just make sure that you're prepped before you go in and sit the actual exam. So I, right. I'm going to offer uh, any, one. Any tips, John? Yeah, I'm going to offer one Sorry. concrete tip and then two places where you can get more information because I've actually thought about this, I've written about this, and I incorporated tips into my uh, CIPPUS course. So my one concrete tip is something called a Pomodoro. That's when you set a timer, and depending on your attention span and what you can tolerate, it's either 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 50 minutes, and you do nothing else but focus on studying for that time because distraction is, is hard. And the two places you can find more, well, I, I gave one away. I, I devoted a video segment to how to learn and how to study. But I also have blog articles on my website. Uh, it's, one's called How to Learn and Study, and the other's called How to Take an Exam. And, you know, there's no magic secret trip tricks to help you do it with no effort. Uh, it's really about effort and using that effort wisely. Um, so hopefully I'm I'm not uh, bringing up bad memories here. But I want to ask Chris Stevens. Uh, he he was a guest on on cyber work, and he mentioned briefly either at the end of the show or in our our private chat that you 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 uh, took and and failed uh, a IAPP cert, uh, and just because you you felt like you already kind of can you speak a little bit about that like the the experience of of um, you know sort of coming into the exam with the sort of like well if I know this then I'm sure I'll know that kind of thing. Chris, of course, you would bring up that discussion during this discussion. <laughs> um, but, you know, it goes back to what John said. I, I love what John just said about how to approach these examinations. You know, I had taken several uh, IPP examinations before I got to the Canadian test. And my head was so large that it could fill up a large size rule. And so I thought that I could purchase a textbook one day and then take the Canadian exam the next day. I can tell you that was rife with peril. And I failed the exam and I did miserably because I didn't take the time and preparation to prepare for the exam. The IPP examinations are about time and preparation. And so my feelings were hurt. So I had to make a decision, Chris. We talked about this. Do I retake mm -hmm. the test or do I stop there? But the cert was so important to me. I waited the 30 uh, days I had to wait to retake the test. You know, I paid my thread in $75. But during that time, I used an approach much like what John said. 
I set aside time every day, an hour or two a day to where I focus solely on studying for that exam. And then I tested myself. I took the mock quizzes and things like that. When I retested, I did quite well. And so, you know, what you have to do is you have to make a decision. Is this cert or is this goal important enough for me to retest? If it is, you'll put forth the effort, just like John said. If not, mm-hmm. you'll let that failure stop you and probably change your um, course objectives and dreams forever because you didn't get past the point of failure. If I answered your question correctly, Chris. Yeah, no, that's that, that's great. And and again, because I, 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 I bang this drum all the time on, on this show, but there's that there's a, a seems to be a real feeling among especially people just entering the you know the industry that you know if they fail an exam you know even you know a plus or security fundamentals or something very simple if I, somehow if i fail it that means you know this just isn't the job for me i can't do it or whatever and you know i i think so many of our our, our great professionals that i've talked to have said sure i failed the test i you know i like you said i didn't uh approach it correctly or I wasn't studying hard enough or I figured I could just wing it or, or what have you. And, or even I studied really, really hard and it still didn't make sense. And then I tried it a second time and, and this time it locked in, you know, I, I just, just keep chasing the, you know, keep chasing your dreams. I mean, it's, it, the failure is, is, is always an option, uh, but it's also uh, doesn't have to be a brick wall. It can be uh, just a, just a hurdle. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.